I want to thank you, Paul Leduc, our honor guest uh, from Mexico. Please come to the stage. And we began the festival in 1992 with your films. And uh, I have a present for you because you were not there. And uh, we made this booklet about Barocco. It uh, will be shown tomorrow at uh, uh, 7 o'clock in Leo Kino. And, and this is the the award that you don't forget. When I decided to make films is because I thought that making films would allow me to know, to get acquainted with Marilyn Monroe, for instance. I never got acquainted, <laughs> I never saw her, except for, for own films. And um, it's always glamorous, I mean, it's always it's, it's some sort of an attraction. Uh, in a way it's true, I wouldn't be here if not. Films allow you to travel and to meet people. And even, even if it's only that, it's already attractive. No? The fact that now it's easier to make films, I think, helps to make more people believe that that attraction is possible at that level. No? And it sounds easy. It sounds that if I have an idea of, I know a joke and I want to say the joke, it's enough to make a script about it. No? Little by little you start finding out that it's not so easy and to write a story or to get the money or to get the money back or to make the second film or whatever. But then there's too late. I mean, you already became a filmmaker. Or at least you made one when you started in that, in that road. Well, it was a political moment. I still believe it, but it started in... Um, I think everything started with the Cuban Revolution that gave us, from a political point of view, the idea that we are, that we belong to a continent, not only to a country. A gener we had a generational way of thinking in which the fact that you belong to a country, and that country belonged to Latin America, was very important. Because, for instance, myself, when I, when I, when I decided to become a filmmaker, in Mexico there were no film schools. Now there are a few, but at the time they weren't. Uh, there was no Cinematheque. And uh, I went to Paris to study in Midec in films. And there was the Cinematheque Francaise. And there were some Pesaro Film Festival and some other film festival where people from Latin America met. We had to come to Europe. I met uh, all the cinema novo, Brazilian, Glauber Rocha, Rui Guerra, etc., etc. I met them in, in, in Italy or in Berlin or in Paris. Uh, that also gave us some sort of a conscious that we were more or less in the same situation. I mean, when you compare yourself with the Brazilians, they were older than myself, but they were in the same situation. And um, that started that movement that uh, still exists, although has changed and uh, not exactly the same in many ways. And little by little, most of the countries of Latin America, if we talk only about films, it's more obvious, depend, as we were talking before, 
of the f American films and the American distribution are controlled by, by Hollywood. So it becomes as difficult as to show your film in Japan. Or almost. Maybe not so much, but almost. No? I was fed up with films that I watched in which dialogue, I, I think it was completely unnecessary. I mean, it was, it was not... So, it's not that I'm, I'm against dialogue in all films, but uh, in many films, you say, well, well, what is he talking about? Well, he's telling me what I'm already seeing. I, what, what's the use of uh, words uh, if you're not... And at the same time, you don't have a, a work of the, of the sound, uh, sound uh, uh, track. I mean, it's not only music, it's noises, it's uh, silence even, etc. Finally, we didn't do the Tina Modotti film and we made the Frida Kahlo film. But the idea was still there, so I didn't go so far as doing a completely uh, soundless uh, or dialogueless film. But I went into that direction. And the result was for me very interesting because the reaction of the people what it provoked at the first time is a different attitude from the audience to the screen. That obliges you to think. And to think in, let's say, in certain direction, to think in certain things, not to impose a way of thinking, but I mean to more or less say, look here, I'm telling you a story and I hope you, you'll find it amusing and that you are not going to be bored. But I want you to think about what I'm telling you. And, uh, and not only to, to listen to a story and then forget about the story, or why, why this story and not another story, or why this story happens the way it's being told to me in, in this film. And for that purpose, silence, I think, was very useful. Also, I think it's a, a, a little bit, yeah.